industry. Um, so uh, this is Martin Kaiser uh, with Greenpeace Germany. Introduce yourself. Tell us just quickly what you're focused on here. Yes, my name is Martin Kaiser. I'm dealing with international climate politics and specifically with the role of the European Union and Germany here at the negotiations. Okay, so the European Union uh, is very much uh, a major player in terms of the Kyoto Protocol. Tell our viewers at home why, why that's important. Why do we care about the Kyoto Protocol here? The Kyoto Protocol uh, has rescued uh, a few principles which are utmost important to control the mineral oil industry and the coal industry around the globe. Uh, one is it's a science-based, so it's acting according to the recommendations of the IPCC. And the second, it's rules-based, so you have rules for all the industrialized countries to account emissions and uh, to sanction um, if you don't apply to those um, emission targets. So how would the world be different if we didn't have a Kyoto Protocol? Uh, we wouldn't have achieved uh, the transition from uh, a fossil fuel based uh, industry and, and economy uh, towards a clean um, energy uh, economy. And a lot has happened since uh, Kyoto entered into force in many countries which have shifted investment from uh, coal and oil towards renewable energy and efficiency. Is that simply because of the Kyoto Protocol's impact or is that just a change in the world around us that's caused that? Uh, we are talking about um, legally binding international uh, agreements and with any offense uh, on the Kyoto Protocol, uh, governments question the, the principle of having uh, legally binding agreements to organize work which can only be resolved at the international level. But we have a lot of countries that are not living up to their agreements in the Kyoto Protocol. What's happening to those countries? That's right. I think. Um, um, in the first place, it's the United States which has not ratified uh, the Kyoto Protocol, which is totally unacceptable as a l historically largest emitter of uh, CO2. On the other hand, the world from uh, 2011 is another world than uh, 1997 when the Kyoto Protocol was signed. Uh, so, with the Kyoto Protocol alone, we won't. Um, achieve uh, to stay far below uh, two degree global warming until the end of the century. But without the Kyoto Protocol, we won't uh, achieve uh, that other major emitters uh, from CO2 will join an uh, international legally binding agreement by 2015. We just heard Kaya Chatterjee of WWF talking about the importance of a new, a new global treaty that would replace the Kyoto Protocol. Why don't we just start with a new treaty right now and say that you know the Kyoto Protocol is ending, we'll just start something new? For good reasons, uh, the most vulnerable countries and the poor countries have asked the industrialized countries uh, to take bold step uh, first for the next five years and other major emitters like China, uh, like India, like Brazil uh, to come, uh, to come uh, after that. And it's uh, utmost important that the industrialized countries show this kind of uh, responsibility uh, to the world as a first step and the diplomatic entrance into, uh, into negotiations of a, of a full agreement. Why should they agree to something that when developing countries are not agreeing immediately? What do you mean? Uh, it's a question of binding targets. Why should the developed countries have to take the first step? Um, the developed world uh, has got a lot of benefit uh, while um, exploiting the world's resources and polluting the atmosphere. So it's fair enough um, to pay back to the developing world and it's also um, important to convince uh, the major economies from the developing world uh, to join it a, a treaty in a few years time. Okay, um, what is the EU's role in this? We've heard a lot about the EU uh, this week. We're talking about the Kyoto Protocol uh, and if you believe it's very important to save the Kyoto Protocol, why are you calling on the EU to take the lead? The EU um, has, a, has a huge responsibility uh, for the global climate uh, large economies are um, based in, in, in Europe. Um, the country where I come from, Germany, is the fourth largest uh, economy around the globe. Those countries have a, a historical responsibility um, to shift the trend, trend of global, uh, global emissions. But also from, an, uh, from a diplomatic point of view, 
Um, the European countries, which haven't had a good uh, record in the African continent, they have a responsibility to help, help people to survive uh, the impact of uh, global warming. And so Durban is the moment for the European Union not to pretend um, to, to be good on climate negotiations, but to fight hard for a good outcome here in Durban. And earlier this year, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that the EU was going to move forward boldly on this. Have they? No. Uh, this is just uh, lip services from Chancellor Merkel so far. And we are uh, asking her to engage next week here in Durban at the high-level talks which are needed uh, behind the scenes. Without a personal engagement from Chancellor Merkel and other leaders from, from Europe, um, the good positions the European Union has provided uh, in the negotiations here uh, will become just another, uh, another fork in the, in the negotiations, rather a serious attempt to bring these negotiations forward. And the other thing you spoke about, uh, just to wrap up this morning, was about ambition, the, the level of ambition from, from EU countries. Have you seen enough ambition from them uh, on these issues so far? Since 2008, the European uh, Union hasn't taken any decision on the on the ambition level um, of the of the Union itself. It has delayed uh, important decisions uh, which are needed to control the coal industry, to control the oil sector uh, within Europe. And we are asking specifically the Polish presidency to make us make a change and to take responsibility for the citizens of Europe and the citizens of, the, the, of uh, Poland uh, to prevent uh, the disastrous consequences of global warming. And when we talk about ambition, we're talking about the percentage of emissions that will be reduced in the coming years. What has Europe pledged to and what do you think they should be pledging? Uh, Europe has a, a legally binding target of uh, minus 20 percent uh, based on uh, 1990. And it's uh, pretty much clear that in a few years' time they will over-achieve uh, it uh, already. So there's no... So that's uh, a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a starting point. But it's clear, um, and according to IPCC, that uh, industrialized countries um, have to be in a range of 25 to 40 percent. So the European Union has to do more, has to do, uh, show more uh, responsibility, and even more important, they have to give a, a clear signal to the corporate sector uh, for investment. And this is not, not given at the moment, and that's why uh, Europe has to do the next step. So if I understand correctly, are you saying that by raising their own level of, of ambition on how much they're going to cut their greenhouse gases, that will, that will support their, in, in their industries? That will make things easier for their businesses? Um, the business sector led by Business Europe is heavily lobbying behind the scenes uh, to lower the ambition uh, in the European Union and to prevent more ambition uh, on, the, on the reduction target. And that's for sure, while there are a few companies who make a lot of profit while polluting the atmosphere on the back of many other companies, of many other peoples uh, in Europe. And the political leaders have to listen to the people and not to the polluters. Are you optimistic that at the end of next week we'll have a good outcome? Uh, we have no choice. The world can't leave uh, Durban with an ambitious uh, result here. And what we are asking European leaders, what we are asking President Obama, is to agree to an um, uh, ambitious uh, negotiation mandate with a deadline 2015 on the one hand, and uh, a short and strong commitment period um, uh, until 2017. Great. Thank you, Martin. We'll, we'll check back in with you next week. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.